for the last decade, there's been a jacking or neon above the jukebox. And it always gave me such pride. And then somebody sent, sent me a picture and the neon was gone. And I damn near had a breakdown. Let's say, same scenario, neon is gone, but somebody sends you a picture of somebody else's neon and your spot. W which one would it be that would really get, would really cheese you off? Could you have you? <laughs> oh, no. Will you say it? And you probably won't. Who would it be? The year did you start doing the eight years thing? 90 or 91, the, the January of... I didn't realize we were that far behind you in the eight years Monday night. Were you, you were Mondays. I was every Tuesday night. And you got you guys started playing there around ninety eight. Ninety eight. So all of your shows there were in the triangle stage at the back of the bar. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All it wasn't even a stage. Yeah. It was. We'd have to come in. I'd come in at like six or seven. Take the booth out. That was right <laughs> underneath the TV. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd take that and put it back by the men's restroom by the payphone. Yeah. And uh, the jukebox was back there then too. Yeah. And so we have to, when we went out, we had to un I had to unplug the jukebox, which was. Which is the worst place that you could set up the band uh, uh, in that place ever. Because if you remember, and I don't know that they fixed it or not, but something wasn't right with the plumbing and the bathroom. <laughs> used to stink. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> I remember there was the walkway. Here was, here was the corner. The bathrooms were back here. And you'd walk through, and then there were like room for like three or four booths over here. Uh -huh. And people, that's where all your friends would sit and just yell mean shit at you while you're oh, yeah. playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, when we first tried to get booked into Eight Airs, it was Lone Star Trio. And you know what they told us? They, we, they wouldn't book us because they told us in 1993... We only book established acts. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. In what circle? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm still taking the booth out. Yeah, right. The PA up. Yeah, really? It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not I think established in that business is two different things. One for the artists or the acts. And established to the owner just means people who draw a big crowd. Well, we were bringing people. Yeah. They, they really missed out, you know, because, but they wouldn't, have, I mean, because even when 1100 Springs started playing at Eight Airs, I don't think, and I would hate to say this because I love Lois and everybody there, but I think it, at first it was not obvious to them at all because we weren't very good. We weren't drawing a crowd. We're on Monday nights and we looked weird and all the bar regulars wanted us out. And then when people did start showing up, it was all our friends from the bars. It was service industry nights. So yeah. it was all a bunch of tattooed weird and chicks were dancing with each other and stuff. And they're like... These, you need to get rid of these guys. <laughs> but Paul Grubbs was the one who was like basically going to Lois and Junior and saying, as I understand it. Yeah. Um, but basically saying, you, you need to give these dudes a chance. This is, these are people who aren't ever in here on Monday nights. That's a good thing. Right. And it turned into a scene. It's so funny how that works, man, because they wanted my crowd. Yeah. I wanted your crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I would see your crowd, I'd be like, why don't we get the tattooed freaks? Yeah. Like, we're freaky, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, instead it was like every Tuesday I played, it was frat night at the at Eight Airs. Yeah. And, and they loved it because it was all these kids coming in from nine to two and spending money and assholes with elbows. And, yeah. And it just became, it, it was, that was, that was my means to an end. To just get reps. Yeah. To just play, play a new song in front of people and see if yeah. I can get anyone to take their eyes off a chick and say, oh, that's a cool song. Well, your Live at Eight Urge record, I think, is better than ours. I mean, ours ours captures the moment, but it's, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it. If you've ever gone, gone back and listened to it. I don't really go back and, I never go back and listen. To your stuff? Only when other people are excited and want to play me songs, and I'll go. Hey, that's pretty good. That, wow. You don't step back in the time machine hardly It's a lot ever. better than I thought it was. You fire up the old flux capacitor every <laughs> once in a while. No, I, 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 loved, I loved your record, and especially Flutter was such a big song for you yeah. at the time. Yeah, And, you know, every time we would be loading in at Eight Airs, they would play that because they loved that it was another live at Eight Airs CD. That's right. It breaks my heart. I don't think any of our music is on the jukebox at Eight Airs anymore. Oh, that's... I don't think it is. 
That can't be true. I think it is. It's okay. It's all right. That's not okay. It, it, I mean, how many live it, at eight years do they have? Right. <laughs> gets me a little bit right that here. That gets me a little uh-huh. bit. I could be wrong about that, and I hope that I am. But uh, but I think it may be true. Well, next time I'm in Dallas, I'm going to go see. Did you go check it out? I'm going to. You might need uh, to write it wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I, if you if you see it, take a screenshot and send it to me. I will. I got. I, I, I had a heartbreak that in that same sense. Um, somebody sent. Me, somebody went to Aders and sent me a picture of the jukebox, and for the last decade or however long. There's been a jacking or neon above the jukebox, and it always gave me such pride. And then somebody sent sent me a picture, and the neon was gone, and I damn near had a breakdown. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I found out they just had to send it back in for servicing. Oh, okay. <laughs> they put it back. I was like, I'm back. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see if you how truthful you feel. If let's say same scenario, neon is gone. Uh but somebody sends you a picture of somebody else's neon in your spot. Which one would it be that would really get really cheesy off? The, could you have you? <laughs> oh, no. Will you say it? And you probably won't. Who would it be? Which really would get your goat the most? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that would go. drive me insane. <laughs>